coming on to diet and environmental issues. Now, of course, we can't avoid carcinogens. I mean, walking down Fulham Palace Road, you're walking past taxis, you are going to breathe carcinogens. So it's not a case of avo avoiding all carcinogens. It's about a case of trying to reduce the amount of carcinogens we have exposed to us and increase the antidotes to carcinogens, which used to be called antioxidants, but I'm not allowed to use that term anymore. Is that correct? It's interesting that yes, you're not using it, so I'm <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not trendy to use the word antioxidant anymore, apparently. But uh, for, for the reasons I'll, tell, I'll, I'll explain in a minute. But anyway, um, so it's all about a balance. We need to, uh, every day, we need to make sure we have more antidotes to cancer than cancer-forming um, habits and um, foods. So, next one. So, what are, the, what are the things which promote cancer? I'm talking about food now. I mean, the most common um, carcinogen in our diet are called acrylamines. These are produced by high temperature cooking, uh, such as baking sugar. Um, uh, the nitroso compounds are from red bloody meat, and the aromatic hydrocarbons from anything burnt, so barbecued uh, sausages and things like that. Uh, but of course, we, we talk about alcohol as a carcinogen, which may be. Um, sugar is a very strong carcinogen, and various other things like formaldehyde. So I think this is a, a, a general, if you go onto the FDA website, the Food and Drug Administration website, and click in for carcinogens, they do a league table every few years of the things in our, in our environment which are carcinogenic. But probably burnt barbecued meat comes up there, uh, or anything on the health section of, uh, of, of boots is usually pretty much at the top. For example, vegetable crisps, they're actually very sweet and they're super baked. They're full of, they're full of um, acrylamines. People think you're being healthy by having a carrot crisp, don't you? But actually, uh, and uh, I've heard that the FDA are thinking of putting warnings on them. What do you think um, the highest, um, what's the, thing, the highest thing we can buy in any supermarket um, which has got the highest amount of acrylamines in, which we all regularly eat? Put it there. If I say that crisps have sort of three, uh, crisps have um, about four, 400, someone said it, 400 parts per million. Uh, chips have about, you know, from a chip shop have about uh, 400 parts per million. A cereal bar, like an oat bar, would have about 900. What do you, when someone said Green it a minute ago. Cream crackers, yeah, they're, they're pretty lethal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> chips? Yeah, chips, they, they, they're. Frozen chips, you're right, because they often put a, a sugary flavouring on. So when you bake them, that, that sugar goes you know, straight to carcinogens. Uh, but someone said something a minute ago. That would be, yeah, the black on bacon would be bad. Bacon itself, um, not good, but not that bad. It's just anything where you see that black carbon. Um, yeah, no. Um, it comes in a can. No. <laughs> no well, the Coca Cola is bad because it's got sugar in, but it's a it's a crisp like thing. If you if you Google cancer in a can, it comes up. Pringles, yes. <laughs> it's Pringles or another word called cancer in a can. They have three thousand parts per minute. If you think an ordinary crisps has like six hundred, so. Uh, well, <coughs> apparently the reason for that is they just process carbohydrate with added sugar and then they heat it to a very high temperature to make it into that lovely shape which we all love. So, uh, Did you say energy bars? Well, energy you, um, yes, if you get um, superheated ones, like um, oat bars which have been heated to a high temperature, you can actually, if you're very determined... If you, there was a very good conference called the Food and Nutrition <coughs> Conference in Olympia last year, and there are companies who are making health bars and cream crackers which have only been heated to 40 degrees. So you can get them, and they taste really nice, but they're not the common ones you see on the shelves. You don't need to heat them to 200 degrees centigrade. It just is easier to make them, of course, in an industrial way. Is this uh, frozen toast? Or uh, burnt toast, sorry, oh, okay. the black. Okay, <laughs> next one. Um, but we'll come back to that. So, um, what I... about fish and things that have been smoked? Well, anything smoked mm. has got hydrocarbons in. So, mm. yes, but, you know, there's a balance. Mm. Um, 
because we got, you know, we're allowed to talk about lots of things. Um, I on, I, any people on Twitter? No? no. Um, I like to, um, on the website there's a section, um, cancernet.co.uk, about carcinogen, so you can click on that. And if there's any new carcinogen, anything which is uh, being published, I try to put it into a newsletter, so, um, um, which comes out once a month. So anything I see in the literature, which is uh, interesting, recently I saw a, an article about not cleaning your teeth is uh, carcinogenic. Yeah, didn't know that. Uh, so I tried to encourage my children to clean their teeth because they might get cancer in 30 years' time. It doesn't work though somehow. Um, <laughs> that the, the actual the bacteria has been found in the, in the cancers and it's thought to be one of the triggers that why the bowel cancer actually might trigger into, a uh, bowel might trigger into cancer. So um, for example, think anything like that, which I see in the literature, I'll put on the newsletter, which comes out once a month. So coming on to food, well, we know that that sort of thing is healthy. Um, well, we believe that sort of thing is healthy, but what about the evidence? Well, there are lots and lots of data, and we have a nutritionist here, I'm sure we'll ver verify that, that if you, uh, we know that those sort of foods will increase the risk of cancer, but what about if you have cancer, will it increase the risk of relapse? This is a nice study called the Nurses' Health Study. It looked at people's dietary habits over several years, including the people who'd had breast cancer, and it showed quite clearly if you eat a healthy diet compared to an unhealthy diet, you have about a 20% difference in relapse rate. Uh, next. So, and this was published in JCO, again, the world's best cancer journal. I, I like this one because uh, when I first became an oncologist, all my patients were told not to eat soya because soya is phytoestrogenic and will stimulate the estrogen receptor and cause the cancers to grow. Of course, based on absolutely no evidence at all, uh, but poor women were told this for years. But actually, soya <coughs> products weakly bind to the estrogen receptor and actually block it like tamoxifen. Um, the only time it could be dangerous if you take soya supplements, which overstimulate the receptor. But there's been two very large studies, one from America, one from China, which shows that people who eat more soya products after breast cancer actually have a lower risk of relapse. So what patients have been told for 20 years was completely wrong. Um, so, and the same applies to prostate, actually. So, uh, next slide. Um, this was a nice study from Ornist, a very famous uh, American doctor who became um, one of the doctors to uh, Bill Clinton and wrote a book which sold three million copies, so I'm very jealous of him. Um, <laughs> Um, and he, he was the, one of the first people, he got a randomization of people with prostate cancer from California, and he managed to find, get a group who didn't have their prostates removed, which is quite an achievement in America, because the surgeons are very incredibly good at wallotectomies over there. Um, and he randomized them to um, an exercise and living well program against uh, standard care. And um, this was quite an old study now, because everyone lives healthily now. Uh, so, and he showed a quite significant reduction in PSA by a year. And this was one of the first trials which showed you could get an intervention and you could see a difference in markers of cancer. And what he also sorry. did, sorry, in that trial, he got, the, no, no, sorry, he got the blood out of the recipients in both limbs and added that blood to cancer cells in a petri dish in a laboratory and showed that the cancer cells grew slower in the healthy group compared to the unhealthy group. So there are chemicals being produced in your bloodstream which have anti-cancer properties which can be transferred somewhere else. Probably the components of diet which are most important are things called the polyphenols or more grammatically speaking, phytochemicals, because um, we've just written a paper together on this. So it's a, and there are thousands of polyphenols within foods. And um, we know that people who eat diets with lots of polyphenols, which we'll come on to again, uh, but essentially are herbs, spices, berries, fruit, vegetables, have a lower risk of developing cancer. And this, this was your classic Giovannucci study from America where this, uh, people had lots of tomatoes and colourful fruit had a lower risk of prostate cancer. But the same applies to the others. But also there's a number of trials now, for example, Pierce, which showed if you have more than your five a day combined with exercise, you have a lower relapse rate. So that's more than your five a day.